I've built well over 100 gaming PCs at this point. And in this video, I'm gonna go through all of my tips and tricks to make sure that your build goes as swiftly as possible. We're going to talk about 10 steps that everyone should take when it's time for your build to go under the screwdriver. And I can guarantee that this is gonna save you time, heartache, and a whole lot of frustration. But first, a quick word from this video's sponsor. Corsair's Hydro X is your gaming PC's new best friend. This exceptional custom cooling system not only lets you get unbelievable temperatures, but it's near silent with extreme performance. It is so easy to get started. Simply fire up the Hydro X configurator, pick a style and theme, and then let Corsair handle the rest. You'll get a full list of everything that you need with an easy buy link from Corsair.com. Get started with custom cooling the easy way today with that link down below. Let's do this in chronological order. So before you've even picked up a screwdriver, make sure that you grab yourself a USB drive and install Windows onto it. This is super easy to do, and it doesn't require you to have bought an extra license, so you can always do that later or just transfer your current Windows account across. While you're here, I'd also recommend that you grab the drivers for your new PC and then put them on the stick too, as while well, most of the computers that I built will work straight out the box, some don't actually recognize the networking solution, and you might find that you just can't connect to the internet without installing a driver manually. So better to be prepared on this one. By doing all of this before you start building your gaming PC, you'll find it so much easier. So when the time comes that everything is actually fully assembled, you just grab your drive, put it in the back of your computer, turn it on, and it should load into Windows and start installing it for you. Dead simple. A word of warning though, if you're using an older motherboard with a brand new processor, so say a Ryzen 5000 in a B550 motherboard, then you might also need to flash the BIOS. I've talked about this properly in a different video, so there's no need to stress. Just give that a watch and then you'll know if this affects you or not. Awesome stuff. You're now ready to start building your very own gaming PC. And step one is to actually prepare your workstation. Make sure that you pick somewhere that isn't cramped, but do also make sure you pick somewhere other near a window or that you have loads of different lights around and a lamp maybe at the side of your table that you can aim in at different spots is gonna be really useful, especially if you picked a black case because it can get quite dark in there. There's not that much light. In terms of tools, the things that I use, I've just remembered I've not got my normal mic on. I'd probably sound like I'm a million miles away. The most important bit of the puzzle is this, a standard Phillips crosshead screwdriver. You don't need to get one that's this long. Most people laugh at me for some reason, but it does come in handy, I promise. But make sure you get one with a magnetic tip. This is really useful for installing motherboard screws and things like that so they don't run away. You also need a slightly smaller version of it, not just in terms of the height of the screwdriver, but the head itself. This is gonna be used for PCIe SSDs. A pair of scissors, which is obviously useful for opening up the packaging, but then also for cutting zip ties. And then a pair of pliers is something I guess you hope you won't need, but if you do need it, you'd be very grateful that you have it. This is mainly if something gets stuck, normally like a standoff or something, or just for tightening that in to your motherboard, it's very useful. I did wanna show you actually not to go for the longer ones, you want the more snubby one as this has a lot better grip. I find that this actually sometimes just doesn't work, whereas this one is pretty consistent. And then last but not least, you need some bright pink thumb screws because if you don't have these, then your PC just won't look very good. That bit's a joke. Okay, that's enough of the boring stuff. Now comes the really fun, yet very nerve wracking bit, actually assembling your gaming PC with your own bare hands. I can't promise that you're gonna find this particularly stress free, but generally speaking, it is pretty straightforward. Just be aware that your very first PC build will probably take a fair bit of time. The biggest mistake that most first time builders will make is to actually start building inside the case itself. I'm sorry, I can't do this anymore. It is too hot in here. You're gonna to have to put up with a brown t-shirt, the beige t-shirt that I bought in Malaysia. It's traveled a long way to be here just for you. There's a few reasons for this, but ultimately it's just way quicker and easier to build out in the open rather than doing it inside the chassis. You have loads of fiddly bits here and you don't wanna mess it up. I'd recommend assembling your CPU, RAM, and PCIe SSD at this stage. And if you are using one, a CPU air cooler too. All-in-one liquid coolers should be fitted inside the case first, but it's still a good idea to actually get the mounting hardware all on the motherboard before it goes into the chassis. When you're done, you can then just slide the whole thing straight into the case and then screw it down. Easy as a Sunday morning. While we're on the topic of CPU coolers, I would actually also recommend that everybody buys a tube of thermal paste and some TIM or thermal interface material remover 
just because if you do decide to upgrade your processor, change your CPU cooler, or maybe you just want to give everything a little bit of a deep clean, then you'll find that you can just take everything apart and put it back together again without waiting on buying any bits from Amazon, even if it is like a day or two. It'd still be annoying. It's good just to have this in the drawer, and it is super cheap. I think it's around about eight pounds or something. I'll leave it all linked down below with my Amazon affiliate links. Now, the PC gaming chassis themselves come in a huge range of styles, anywhere from big to small, RGB to blackouts, glass to fast, can't think of anything that sort of rhymes or goes with glass, but anyway, the thing that they do all actually have in common is that you can take them apart, and I'd highly advise tearing them down as much as they're designed to be really, just because it makes building in your PC that little bit easier. This is a pretty standard affair where you have a side panel on both sides, and then the front does actually come off, but you have some wires at the top of this one. Most don't, to be honest with you, but it's something to bear in mind. So if we pull this off, then you'll see you can access the fans here at the front. But if you're using a slightly more elaborate case, you'll probably also have a top piece as well that will come off. And that's the bit that's going to give you loads of light, even if you're not mounting fans or radiators at the top. A good top tip. Quite literally a top tip, because you're taking the top off. Anyway, I, I, I need a new job. You'll find that in the more compact, usually a little bit cheaper cases, that the cutout for the CPU cable will be really small, and there's very little room to actually fit your fingers in. So the thing to do before you actually start your build is just to sort of analyse what's going on, and if you have a modular power supply, just get the power cable itself, feed it through here at the top, plug it into your motherboard, and then actually screw your motherboard in. That way you've not got to put your hand in here and actually try and fit it in, because I'm obviously quite small, I have small hands, and I find it really difficult sometimes. And if you're, well, more a man than me, you'd find it pretty much impossible. So doing this before you've built everything up can be a little bit easier. I've never been very manly. What are you saying? You want to go? You probably do. You've been locked down for the last few months. Right, things are getting serious now, and the next tip really is no joke. RTFM. Read the flipping manual. I don't think that there's a single household item out there that's more complicated than a motherboard. And if you've never built a gaming PC before, there are going to be a lot of things that you just don't quite understand, or maybe haven't even thought about. The thing that you really need to know about though, that a lot of people just don't talk about because it's not necessarily part of building a gaming PC, is the error codes and the error LEDs. It will look slightly different depending on which motherboard that you go for, but here we have a series of four lights right down here at the bottom, and it says there's CPU, DRAM, VGA, and boot. This will actually be able to tell you exactly what's going wrong. So if it's saying VGA, you know there's a problem with your graphics card. If it's saying CPU, CPU, vice versa. It's a good way of properly identifying what the issue is before you get into panic mode. Even if you built a PC numerous times before, every build is unique and airflow is super important. Just because you have a fan fitted by default, it doesn't mean that it's going to be in the right place nor that it's necessarily facing the right direction that you're after. Case in point, that was a good one, my most recent build. You've got one fan at the back, but then nothing at the front. This would mean that the graphics card just won't get the air that it desperately needs, so I added an extra fan to keep the temperatures and noise as low as possible. Fans effectively cut through the air, so it should be pretty easy to work out which way is which just by looking at the fan itself. But if you're having any issues whatsoever, then if you can see the label at the back of the fan, then this usually means that the air is blowing towards you. Or if you have like a planar side, or in some cases a planar label, then this means that the air is going to be blowing through the fan. And sometimes you'll find that the manufacturers are really nice, like they have been on this Fantex fan, and actually put a little arrow to show you which way the air is going to go, if you're in any doubt whatsoever. But this is only half the story though, as even the very best fans out there can make an absolute racket for pretty much no reason at all. So do be sure to tune your fans either in the BIOS or with some software so that they only ramp up when you need them to. Now, cable management is something that I think a lot of people get quite snobby about. It's a bit of pride for people. My cable management is better than yours, thus I'm the better PC gamer which obviously is a load of rubbish, but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't put any effort into your cable management at all. And this is something I think a lot of people can find quite intimidating, but to be honest, as a general rule of thumb, as long as you can actually put this side panel back on, then you've not really got too much to worry about. My easy tip is to cable manage as you go, tucking cables into neat channels or using the straps, but do make sure that you're not using any cable ties until you're finished and you've made sure that everything works. And importantly, if your PC doesn't work, 
the first time that you push the button, seriously, it's okay. This is pretty normal to be honest with you, especially if you're a first time builder. Don't panic. There's normally something very easy that's gone wrong and you just need to give yourself a few moments to go over everything, double check, call head and just fix whatever you missed. Common problems are things like power cables just not being plugged in properly. I had a friend once who was struggling on the phone for me for around about 45 minutes. He'd, well, he thought he'd double checked everything and he was dead set that his hardware was dead, but it was just the CPU power cable at the top that wasn't plugged in. Sometimes the RAM itself might not be seated properly. There's a few different things, but it's usually pretty obvious. So I guess prepare for something to come up and then it'll all be part of the plan when it happens. And if it doesn't, then happy days. You can just, well, save yourself 10 minutes and make yourself a cup of tea. So there you have it then, my 10 tips and tricks to building a better gaming PC. If you've enjoyed this video, please smash that like button, get yourself subscribed, and let me know what I've missed down in that comment section below. What was something that happened to you maybe on your first ever PC build that you think a lot of people might uh, run into the same sort of issue or just any advice, any tips, let us know down in the comment section below. I would love to hear from you. If you do want to check out current pricing on any of the parts that were actually featured in this video, then you can find them linked down below with my Amazon affiliate links. And of course, while you're down there, don't forget to check out Corsair Hydro X. Corsair has a wide range of blocks and fittings to match any modern gaming PC with brand new GPU blocks that are perfect for RTX 3000 series. All thermal pads and pastes are pre-applied so they slip onto your components like a glove. Create the loop of your dreams and give your PC that next level look with HydroX today. Check it out with that link down below. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I will see you in the next one.